Well, we just have part B now, so um, let's see how this goes. I don't know if this is going to be harder or easier than the other one. Sometimes uh, they make the second one easier, sometimes they make it harder. Try not to prejudge. I'm just going to look through it and see what happens. So uh, we occasionally have two identical items in rapid succession, and so the vendor wants to be able to check to see if there are two gizmo objects that have been purchased at the same time or very close to each other in order. So has adjacent equal pair is going to go through apparently and look to see if any pair of items in there. So I've got gizmo, gizmo, gizmo. I've got a series of these and what I'm thinking is going to happen is it's going to compare these two and if they're adjacent, if they're the same thing and they're adjacent, then we're going to send back true because we have an adjacent pair. If not, we'll move to the next pair and we'll check here and see if those are are the same thing. And if they are, we'll send back true. Otherwise, we'll send, we'll uh, examine these. So we'll just keep on moving through the list. And if ever any of these are the same gizmo, we're going to send back true. Otherwise, if we get to the end of the list and we don't have any adjacent pairs, we're going to return false. So I think I have a pretty good idea of how I want to do that too. I know I'm going to be keeping track of individual indexes here. As I'm thinking about this, I've got a 0 and a 1 and a 2 and a 3. And I'm always going to want to compare one of these with the one next to it, the plus 1 relative to that. So this isn't good for an enhanced for loop. I think I want an index loop that's going to go through. And there's actually a few different ways that you could solve this. So um, you, if you already tried this, you, you may have some way that you like and that worked really well. I'm going to show you how uh, I would probably do this here. So first of all, um, I'll put in my curly braces here. And I'm going to put a return false at the bottom. Because again, I know if I go through this entire thing and I never return true, I want to make sure that I don't forget to return false. Meaning I went through, I checked all these, and I never found an adjacent pair. So at the bottom of all of this, I'll return false. What I'm actually going to do, though, is I'm going to set up my loop. And I'm going to like, I'll start right there and compare those first two. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this first element here and save it in a variable. So let me start with, uh, I'll just set up a gizmo variable here. And I'll, um, I'll call it gizmo1, g1. Because I'm going to be comparing one and another one, so I'm just going to call them one and two. So gizmo g1 is going to be that first element in there. What's the name of this? Oh, this is purchases, and it's an array list, so I'm going to use get. So I'll say purchases.get, that first element in the array, index zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to start at the next position there. So I'm going to have a loop that runs from there all the way to the end of the array. So I'll have a uh, loop, yeah, an integer loop for int. I'll just call it i, classic counting variable. It's going to start at 1 and it's going to keep on going all the way to the end of the array. So that's going to be through the full length of purchases. But remember, for an array list, we call that size, the full size of the array list, i++. And what I'm going to do is a few things here. I might get kind of crunched down in here. I'm running out of space. First thing I'm going to do, I think, just to be very explicit, is I'm going to identify gizmo g2. Because again, I said I was going to compare these two. You could be slightly more efficient here, but I'm going to try and be as plain as I can. Gizmo g2 is going to be whatever purchase I have at this i position. I'm trying to get this next one there. So that's going to be purchase purchases dot get i. So if I'm at zero, I just got the first or the one at index one. And now I'm ready to compare those. And what am I going to do? If g1, the one I saved here, that first one, dot equals g2. And I'm allowed to do that. I don't know if you remember this, but I'm allowed to do that because the equals method was defined up here. If you take a look at equals right here, we define this equals method that allows us to compare two different gizmo objects. So because of that, I'm allowed to use that dot equals there. Cool. Well, let me uh, run back down here then. 
and keep on going. So if those two are equal to each other, if G1 equals G2, then what I'm going to do, and I'm going to just crunch it in here, is I'm going to return true. I just found two things that were adjacent and they are the same. I don't need to look any further. I'm going to return true. But what if they're not equal? If they're not equal, the next thing I have to do is I have to compare the next two items in there. So watch what I'm going to do with this. This is kind of fun and uh, tricky. I'm going to change the pen color here just so you can see it down in here. So else I'm going to set G2 equal to G1. Sorry, strike that, reverse it. G1 is going to be equal to G2. What that's going to do is that's going to save this second element that I was just looking at, element at index 1. It's going to save it in that G1 variable. And when the loop goes back up here, I is going to go up to 2. So I will be here at 2. Gizmo G2 will now be set to purchases.get that next element. So we'll get that second element. And now I have a new G1 and G2 that I can compare. And if they're equal, I'll return true. So I'll just continually move through the loop there, constantly updating I and shifting G2 into G1 so that when I get a new G2, we can compare those two. And that's it. That's it. It's a relatively short little loop. I just need to make sure that I account for everything there. And sorry, it's a little scrunched up there, but that's the code. And that's the solution for the gizmo problem.